So in sketching out my transformation, I don't really have a transformation yet. I have a cat watching fish go by and then its head opening up. You could say that's a transformation just because it's an unexpected way that the head opens up. But then I'm going to have the, the fish like close and then it's going to get a little ill. So this is going to be the transformation as it's sucking the, the tail or sucking the head in, right? Just a little bit there. It's going to start to change color. And we have that colloquialism, you know, you look green, green around the gills, that kind of thing. So I'm going to say to a sickly green, which can be fun to do with adjustments. And then, I'm just going to be really gross. I'm going to have cats, uh, fish skeletons in there. And the expression obviously is going to change here. The only expression that's going to change up to this point is the eyes are going to follow the fish. So the eyes are like that, looking forward, then the eyes are like this, looking to the side, then the eyes are looking to the other side. And then the eyes are trained on this, trained on this. looking forward again, so you don't expect it, and then getting sick. All right. Da, 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 da. And then, how do I set to reset? So it goes back, the vomit will fade. If you need a, a, a nice, what do they call them? Not an aphorism. Ah, uh, affirmation to say in the morning when you wake up. Just remember, the vomit will fade. And it will reset to telling the story again. Okay, I've got the sketch. I'm just going to export this as a JPEG so I can refer to it. I don't need you to animate your sketch, I just need you to, to post it as the first part of the first component. And then I need you to keep everything together in a way that, that's helpful. So I'm always going to name it with my name. And then assignment three, rough storyboard sketch. So this is one of three components we turn in. Make sure it's a JPEG or a PNG. If it's hand drawn, just take a photo of it. And then we can put it right into our project. And that's going to remind you of what you need to do. Okay, now that I have my sketch and I kind of understand the assets needed, I have to think, are there any other assets I need? I've got two fish. I've got two fish skeletons. Uh, I'm going to make my own puke. I think that that will work. And then I've got the cat. So now it's all about cleaning up my assets. And I want to do it in the right format. So our finished animation is going to be a square format. And it's going to be eight inches square at 150 pixels per inch. All right. So I'm going to use photo P. And I'm going to open up my cat. And because I have my cat as a PSD, it's built with vector shapes. And right away, I can start cleaning this up. Like, I don't need all these individual shapes. That's way too complicated. But 
I need to figure out like a puppet, what parts of this do I want to have move? And I said I wanted the eyes to move, right? So I'm going to see if I can find those shapes, just those black shapes. So I'm going to have auto select layer on. And I've got shape eight, copy. There it is. And then the other one. So these two I'm going to mark with a color. I'll make them red because I don't want to flatten these. And then I want them to move on the eye very believably, but I want them to move underneath this highlight. So I need to find the highlight that's in front of them because I need that as a puppet asset too. So it's shape 11. So I'll mark those as yellow and shape 11 copy. Okay, now I'm going to select all of those, turn them off. And then for everything else, I'm just going to merge what's visible. So I'm going to go to layer and there is no merge visible option. So what do I do? I'm going to delete any layer that's not already turned on. Yeah, because I don't need any of these. And this is just cleaning up your assets, making them functional and not too much work. Don't need that, don't need that. Okay, now I'm going to select by holding down Command these layers I have turned off and I've marked. And I'm going to move them all to the top by using command right bracket. So now they're on top of everything. Now I'm going to go to my topmost layer above that because I'm not going to make the whiskers twitch or do anything else except make those eyeballs move. So I'm going to now say layer merge layers. I'm going to select everything underneath. So this is the same as merge visible, but merge layers. They have to all be selected. All right, now what do I have? I have this base of my cat, which has all these kind of complicated textures to it. And I, I have the eyes that I can move. And I have the highlights on the eyes that I will not move, right? So I'm now going to save this once I make one other change. I have to find a square to crop. So this is how you can crop to a square, a perfect square. Click on the cropping tool, which is a very dangerous tool in PhotoP. So be very mindful not to click accidentally. And where you have the options at the top, we are going to do fixed ratio one to one for cropping. And that will force it into a square. From there, just like a transform box, we can shrink it, we can grow it. Actually, I want a little bit of extra space because I need space for the fish to come in. But I need it to be a full square. Then hit return. Now, I'm going to clear that fixed ratio, change it back to free for the next time I use the tool. And then I'm going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to change it from whatever it is to 8 inches by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. And then I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it as a PSD because I want all those layers. And I'm going to call this, <clears throat> excuse me, assignment three. It's our freeware class. And this is the first of two PhotoP files we'll use for animation. 
This is called my assets file to the desktop. Now, what if you're not modifying something you already have? You just want to get started and then bring things into it. This is how you do that. You would say new project in photo P. You would make it eight inches by eight inches at 150 pixels per inch. Those dimensions are in the assignment right here. The size and resolution of your GIF animation should be an eight inch square at the resolution of 150 pixels per inch. White background. Remember, eight by eight inches, double check it because it tries to, to mess with you. Okay, then you can bring your assets in. So for instance, my fish. And then you can name it your assets file. So, I saved it. I don't need this anymore. I need this. My assets file. And I'm actually going to rename it so that assets appears at the beginning. And then assignment three. And actually, often I will fully capitalize assets. And I mark it green. I'll show you the next file we need to create once I've finished my first frame. But there's a few things I can decide still. Uh, because my storyboard sketch is pretty simple. I'm just going to have it open in the corner here in preview. One thing I can decide is if I want just to have a white background or not. Because my inspiration, this is why I love inspiration, whether it's Evan Cohen, whether it's Laura Paulison, who does these beautiful kind of atmospheric, digitally painted transformations in GIF animations. Um, they, I kind of love this, this cloudy backdrop. I like the watercolor gradation there. I like how vintagey it is. So maybe I can find something like that. Let's see, cloudy, vintage, watercolor. I get one. Let's try vintage watercolor. Very scrapbooky. But I can modify. I can always create my own, too. It's 20 pages worth, so there's going to be lots of these kind of backdrops to choose from. Lots of scrapbooking assets. Honestly, I kind of like this. So remember, these are all higher resolution than we need. So I might like just use the corner of that one. Instead of just having plain white, you want to think about these things as you're building your assets. Wouldn't it be nice to have a, a background I can maybe play with a little bit? This one's kind of nice. All these generous people just scanning in their watercolors for people to use for whatever purpose under a Creative Commons license. All right, so that's enough. So I'm going to grab those, download them. I like the paper texture of this. I don't need it at the fullest resolution. And then I'm going to move that into my assets folder or my assignment folder. And now I've got to clean up my assets. So I go to photo P and I'm going to open up my assets file. And now let's bring in a background. This one first. See how it goes behind the eyes. That's great. So my different layers are working. I can grow it. I like the scratches. It's all very nice. I'm going to rasterize it and then I'm going to crop it. Preserve the memory. Then I'm going to get off the crop tool, dangerous tool. Now let's bring in the next one. And this one I'm going to grow this way. Because I just want that texture. 
and then I'm going to crop it. Oh, I got to rasterize it first. 